Today I will show you how you can use the long exposure photography to create those interesting light trails photos. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymanya and welcome to another really fun episode. Today we will go outside and we will have fun with long exposure photography. But before we do that, let me explain you some basics about what is the long exposure photography. First thing that you need to know is what is the exposure, how to use shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And in case you don't know that, go and check my episode about that. You can find the link right here and then come back and uh, continue watching this one. So in short, long exposure photography means that you will have a slower shutter speed and you will capture a lot of moments in time. So just a quick recap about uh, shutter speed. Shutter speed will determine the amount of time that light is hitting your sensor. So shutter speed is measured in seconds and if you have for example really fast shutter speed like 1 over the 1000 or 1 over the 4000th of the second that means that the shutter speed or your camera will just capture that scene in that frame small window of time of 1 over 4000th of a second and of course your subject will be really crisp, crisp, crisp and sharp and frozen in time but if you have a slower shutter speed like 1 seconds, 2 seconds, 10, 30 seconds etc that means that your camera will be opened and it will capture all those moments from 1 seconds or 30 seconds and if you have your subject moving across the frame in that period of time of course you will capture all of those movements and your subject will be blurry. But that's great because we can take advantage of this in long exposure photography. We can capture those moving light trails all across the frame. So you're capturing, you're shooting a uh, car that is moving and for example you shoot for 5 seconds and your car is going from one side of the frame to another side of the frame in that 5 seconds you will capture all those interesting lights that are of course moving with the car. So that's really good. And long exposure photography can be done at the daytime and at the nighttime. But for now we will just go outside and wait for uh, the night, a little bit uh, darker uh, environment because it's easier for beginners. If you want to use long exposure photography at the daytime you need to have something that is called ND filters, neutral density filters, but we will talk about that in some future episodes. Right guys, those are just the quick basics and now let's go outside and let's have fun. Right guys, we arrived at uh, destination and now let's find a proper spot for our photos. Right guys, I think that this will be our scene for today. Now we need to wait around half an hour to get a little bit darker and then we will take some photos. But now I will show you how to set up your camera, what you need actually for uh, long exposure photography and so on. So let's do it. Right guys, for long exposure photography you will need a tripod and your camera and the tripod is a must because you want to have really steady camera and of course if you don't have a tripod you can put your camera on the floor or on some kind of a wall whatever you can go and find uh, your way around but tripod is a really handy tool because you can change the angles you can set your frame however you want and make sure to have really nice good sturdy tripod because plasticky ones a little maybe stronger wind it will move it a little bit and then you will have really blurry shot. You don't want that. So tripod and camera is a must. Right now we need to set our camera. So first thing that I want to do is to set my ISO the lowest value that my camera has. So that's 100 for my camera. Then I want to put the aperture to f8 and then I need to play with the shutter speed. So this is Guys, just experimenting, trial and errors, because you're not 100% uh, sure what the settings you want to use, depends on the lighting conditions, etc. So, I will start with that. ISO to 100, aperture to, to F8, and then I will experiment. 
experiment with the shutter speed, but I need to wait a little bit more to get even darker. There are basically three ways how you can trigger your camera. The best way is to trigger it with a wireless trigger or with some kind of cable trigger because you don't want to move your camera suddenly when you press the shutter button. Another way is to trigger with your phone app because those days cameras has that Wi-Fi uh, function built in and you can connect it with your phone so you can trigger with a phone and the third way is just to manually press it but to set the self timer. So set the timer for the lowest value for example two seconds press it and then you're sure that your camera will not move and after two seconds the camera shutter will uh, trigger and then you will take a photo. So make sure not to move your camera while taking long exposure photos. It's almost dark enough but now I will try to do a few shots uh, in this blue hour because I want to capture the blue sky as you can see right here the sky is bluish color so that's good and I will close the aperture even more I will start with f18 and the shutter speed will be around five six seconds so now I will try I saw it's 100 and let's see what we will get Just a few minutes later it's much darker as you can see and I need to change some settings here on the camera. So I set my aperture to f10 and I will leave it there until the end of the shooting and I change the shutter speed to 10 seconds instead of 5 and 6. And making the shutter speed slower I will have a longer light trails which is cool and as it gets darker and darker I will just change the shutter speed. I will just make it slower and slower so let's do that. Alright guys, we are finished here, it's too cold. Now let's go to another location to show you something more and then back to the studio. We just changed the location and what I want to show you here is that if you are in a situation that you don't have enough car to create a lot of light trails and your scene is not populated with light trails, then there is a nice trick to create several different exposures to wait for a car to pass and uh, take several photos and then in Photoshop I will show you one really easy and neat trick to add even more light trails in the same photo with just one blending mode. Alright guys, and we are done. Now let's go back to the studio and let me show you how you can do that in Photoshop. Alright guys, I'm back in studio. It was so cold outside but now I'm here in nice and warm place. So let me show you really quickly how you can blend multiple images together and add even more light trails using just one blending mode in Photoshop. So let's do it. We are here in Photoshop and this is the last image that we took today so I want to add even more light trails here. And the uh, only thing that you need to do is to load several different images as the layers here in Photoshop. If you're using Lightroom, then you can select all images that you want to load in Photoshop, right click and add it, and then load as the layers in Photoshop or open as the layers in Photoshop. So you'll have something like this. In case you didn't have really good tripod, in case your tripod moved just a little bit, then you can do the next. You can select all the layers and go to File, actually Edit, auto align layers and just press OK and Photoshop will try to align those layers automatically. So just wait for a few moments for Photoshop to finish it. And that's it guys. So as you can see my layers are really nicely aligned already so Photoshop didn't do basically anything. But this is all the different photos that I have and I want to add basically all these different light trails in one photo to have that as a final result. So it's easy like this. You choose a base photo, so this is my base photo, and then what I want to do, I want to select first and last photo, accept the base photo, and just change the blending mode to lighten. And this is it. I have all 
other light trails blended in the same photo it's easy like this in case you're using an older version of photoshop then you cannot do like select all layers and put it in light and blending mode you just need to go one by one to put it in light and blending mode of course now you can choose which one you want to leave which one you want to maybe hide if this is maybe too strong for you etc but this is how how it works and of course maybe i will hide this and of course what you can do you can select all of them and press ctrl command g to merge them into one group and then set a layer mask right here and maybe if you're up to you can use the black color and just remove some of them as you can see i want to remove this part here maybe i will put all the way to 100 percent opacity use a soft brush like this and just remove this down below so i have i have this and this but I don't want to do this so this is it and now you can merge everything together by pressing shift ctrl alt -E or shift command option E on a Mac and then you can go to filter camera row for example and just play with some colors and contrast I will add some contrast maybe add vibrance go to calibration just shift the colors a little bit like this add a saturation a little bit more then I can maybe sharpen it a little bit change the temperature towards the blue add some clarity maybe open the exposure etc and maybe do some kind of split toning add some blues to the shadows and this is this is okay maybe i will add some to the highlights and i will press okay and this is it guys before and after and this is just one exposure photo added more light trails and just color correct it and that's it right guys and that's it for today i really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learned something new and useful like how to use the long exposure photography to take some light trails photos long exposure photography is not just for light trails it can be used at the daytime for example to smooth some water surface or to make those buttery smooth waterfalls etc but for that you will need some md filters and we will talk about that in the future Right, guys, if you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer them. Have fun, experiment, and see you in my next fun episode. Bye-bye.